please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or med scholarships 2020. This problem is from the 2020 physics questionnaire for the undergraduate scholarships. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. Two loudspeakers, S1 and S2, are placed on a plane as shown in Figure 5. The X and Y axes are defined as shown in the figure, and an observer is located at the origin O of the XY plane. The speed of the sound is constant and denoted by V. The distances OS1 and OS2 are denoted by D1 and D2, respectively. Let us review some ideas related to this problem. First is that of a wave. A wave would have a source of a vibration, and that source of vibration will determine the frequency of your wave and the speed of your wave. For example, if you have a source of sound waves, the frequency of that sound, which is the pitch of that sound, would be determined by the source from where it's coming from. At the same time, it is the nature of the sound and the medium through which it's traveling that actually determines the speed of that sound. And we know the speed of sound to be around 350 meters per second. And if we want to determine the other quantities, such as the period and the wavelength, we just use these relationships. Next is the idea of constructive interference. We say that two waves constructively interferes if their crests and their troughs align properly, so they exactly align on each other. So, for example, if we have this wave here, this is wave one, and you have wave two like this, if they are aligned properly, they just add to each other, and so the crest would be this crest plus this crest, and the trough would be this and this added together. And that happens when, for example, in this case, we have a, we have a wave source and another wave source here. And suppose they have the same frequency and the same speed. The waves have the same frequency and the same speed from both sources. And there is an observer here, any point here. And what happens is the wave propagates to the observer. Both waves propagate to the observer. The wave from this source would propagate around D2. The distance is D2. And so let's write it here. And this source would also propagate for a distance of around D1. And that is this. So what happens? when we want them to constructively interfere that means we want their wave their wave cycles to be in sync and that means the waves here must be in sync at this point while they're propagating but at the same time the waves here must also be in sync with with the next next set of wave fronts and therefore the condition that we actually want to satisfy when when we when we want them to constructively interfere is that their difference in path lengths in this case difference between d1 and d2 must be a multiple of the wavelength of the of the wave so integer multiple and so for example if we have one there so it's just one cycle like this here there's also one cycle and the important thing is they align and they could align if there's exactly there are exactly n cycles in in this in this region here and this could also be satisfied if you have two cycles so that's two cycles from that source and that's also two cycles from this source and so if that occurs then you have waves that properly align next to each other, and so you get constructive interference. Next, we also want to review the Doppler effect. So the Doppler effect happens when the distance between the source and, 
or rather the source of the wave and the observer of the wave is changing. So if the distance is changing, we observe a Doppler effect. What that means is that if there is some speed either of the source or of the of the observer, we will see the Doppler, we will see or we will observe the Doppler effect. If the source and the observer are moving apart from each other, they're moving away from each other, then we observe the new frequency. The observer actually observes the frequency to be this. That's just the original frequency times this ratio here. This one is the original speed, the speed of the wave from the source. That's Vs. And U is the speed at which they're moving apart. Now, if they're moving closer to each other, this is the frequency that the observer will observe. What changed is just the sign here. The sign here is now minus. And you will notice that what this means is that this frequency is actually greater than this frequency. And so if they're moving, if they're moving closer to each other, the, the pitch of a sound, for example, will be higher if they're closer, if they're moving closer. And again, that's because we have a minus sign here. And here we have a plus sign, which means that the pitch will sound lower if the, the source is moving away from the observer. And of course, if they are stationary, if no one is moving, so u here is zero. And if we do that substitution, we get that the observed frequency is the same as the source frequency. And lastly, we need to remember the beat frequency. And that is just the difference in the frequencies of the two interfering waves. We will not derive it here, but this is a standard topic in textbooks. The first part of the problem reads, initially both speakers are at rest and the x coordinates of S sub 1 and S sub 2 are the same. They emit sound waves with the same frequency f and the same amplitude. There is no phase difference between their sound waves. Starting from a frequency which is lower than V over D sub 1 plus D sub 2, the frequency is increased gradually. At a certain frequency, the observer first heard the sound with maximum intensity. Find the formula for this frequency. The clue here is that the observer first heard the sound with maximum intensity. Now, maximum intensity happens when the waves constructively interfere. And so we remember that the waves from S1 and S2 constructively interferes when the difference in their path lengths, so the path length, this path length, and this path length, when that difference is a multiple of the wavelength. And so we write it here. So the path length is just d2 minus d1 in this case. And it's a multiple of the original wavelength of the wave. And it is said that the problem says that the frequency, the frequencies of the wave are of the waves are the same. And so that also means that their wavelengths are the same. And so we have n here. n could be any integer. And so this wavelength here, we just convert that into the speed and the frequency. We've seen this before. And we know that the speed of the wave here is just the speed of sound V, and the frequency is just the frequency F. And now the other clue, which is that they that the observer actually first heard the sound. So this can be th this can be satisfied with different values of n. But if it is the first time that this happens, then n must be 1. And so we just replace n with 1, and this is what we get. And of course, we can now obtain the frequency here, which is this. And because this is d2 is greater than d1, uh, we can actually flip them around and put an absolute value symbol, and so that we actually obtain this. Next, speaker S1 starts to move at a constant speed u, which is much smaller than v in the direction of the positive x-axis. 
we need to find the frequency of speaker S1 heard by the observer. This is pretty straightforward because we have already reviewed the Doppler effect. Clearly, this is the case when the source and the observer are moving apart from each other at a speed u. And therefore, we use this first equation here. And we just recall that these equations are valid when u is much smaller than v. And so, we simply have this. And that is this in the choices. A beat is heard by the observer due to the interference between the sound waves emitted by speakers S1 and S2. Find the period of the beat. We recall that we know the beat frequency to be this, and the period is just the reciprocal of that. And so we just solve for this one and get the reciprocal. So let's start by writing down what we already know. So we know that the frequency of of this of this speaker here or rather the frequency of the sound from this speaker as observed from o is this and we solve this in problem two and then the frequency of the sound from speaker two because speaker two is not moving it's it's just f and therefore this beat frequency here is pretty simple to calculate. We just replaced the FO2 here with, with this one, which is F, and FO1 with this one, which is this bit here. We factor out the F, so we obtain this. Now let's just simplify that. And notice we just multiplied this by this denominator here, and so the V on top would cancel and the denominator would look like this and therefore the period which is the, just the reciprocal of this would look like this and that would be letter c here speaker s2 starts to move as well at a constant speed u in the direction parallel to the positive x-axis a beat is heard by the observer at a different frequency find the frequency of the beat now we already know how to find the frequency of the beat and that is given by this formula. And we already know the value of F01 from the previous problem. And now we just need to find F02 and from the Doppler effect again, we can write F02 as follows. Here W is the speed at which the source and the observer are getting farther apart so that's how fast they're moving away from each other and in this case we use w and we cannot just use u because u is how fast the observer is or rather how fast the source is moving to the right but we're, what we're interested in is actually how fast this distance here is changing so this distance is not really the, the change in this distance is not really the same as u and so we use w instead now we also note that w could be computed as the derivative of this of this length here which we call r so the the length der the derivative of the length with respect to time is actually the how the w which is how fast it is changing how fast r is changing with time now, if we use this and use this, we plug them in here, and then we can just factor out the V and the F. Now we have this. We simplify that a bit further. We obtain this. And now we just need to, to find W. And the way we do that is first, we write down the relationship between R, D, U, and this height so this is the relationship we just have the pythagorean theorem that is the length of r squared is actually equal to the height squared and this distance here squared this distance is equal to the original distance which is d sub 1 plus this distance which is the the distance traveled by the source 1 
at time t for so that's u times the time that it traveled and then we just differentiate both sides with respect to t so on this side we get 2r dr dt and dr dt is the w that we're looking for and here this one is just a constant so when you differentiate that that goes to zero and this bit is just this so two times this expression times the the derivative of the inner function which is just u here we just write down the simplified form of the previous equation now we need to get rid of r so the way we do that is we just plug in the actual expression for r which is just this length here squared plus this length squared which is just d2 squared minus d1 squared and now we make use of the given that u is much much smaller than v and therefore if we try to compute something with u over v that would be almost equal to zero so we use this fact and the way i do that is i i divide the numerator by v and the denominator by v but because the denominator has a square root symbol so if you divide it by v in here and you put it inside the square root symbol it will become v squared inside the square root symbol and so if you move it out of the square root symbol that it will just become v so now it becomes like this this is u over v in the numerator and in the denominator i just divided by v squared because we can again take this out and that will just be v over v here so it's all it, it's nothing it, it's it's not changing the the value of this expression and now we can rearrange this so that this v here could come inside here so that we have a u over v At the same time this v here could come inside here so we have a u over v and therefore it becomes like this and now we can actually approximate this to be zero and this to be zero and so in the numerator we will be left with this expression in the denominator this d1 over v squared would cancel with this bit here so we will be left with this in the denominator and notice that v can be factored out and so the v here and the v in the denominator of the denominator can also cancel and we are left with this and now we can substitute the w we can substitute the w here with this value now we just have to plug in the value that we got into the w's here so we do that here now let's multiply the numerator and the denominator by d2 and we obtain this now we can factor out u and this is what we get and this is very similar to what we already have in the choices we just remove the absolute value symbol because d2 is greater than d1 anyway and we see that that's just the same as this if you learned something new today please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications see ya